What's good, y'all? Welcome back to Reek Knows Hoops, and this is the next installment of the What's Next series featuring the Cleveland Cavaliers, who just made a move to acquire Lori Markkinen in a sign-in trade. So I think it's the perfect time to speak on the Cavs, what they've done this offseason, and how their outlook looks going into the future now with a new player added to their roster. Don't be fooled by the title of this video. Um, this is just me testing out to see if it helps, you know, get the video more in the algorithm of, you know, people who aren't subscribed to the channel get some more views, get some more people in the community. So don't be fooled. This is still the What's Next series. And be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new. This is a place where we talk about NBA basketball. So if you love hoops, this is the place for you. And the Cavs, man, um, I'm from Ohio. So this is Ohio's team, even though there's not a lot of Cavs fans in Ohio. A lot of people are LeBron fans here, which is understandably so. But I do know some Cavs fans. And one of my most known Cavs fans is my guy D. Knight. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the bio to all his stuff because he makes some really good music, man. So I'm going to leave a link in the bio to his work. And, you know, he asked me to do a video on the Cavs because he thinks, you know, they can surprise some people this season. And I would hope to see the Cavs just show improvement. I think they showed a little bit of improvement last season. Then they started to deal with some injuries um, towards, like, the trade deadline and stuff. You know, because they were fighting, you know, to be in the playing tournament first half of the season. And then by trade deadline, they pretty much, you know, sold a little bit. They let Drummond go. Um, Kevin Lowe was, you know, not really in the lineup. And it was really just developing the young stars, letting Darius Garland step up in year two. He had a phenomenal jump from year one to year two. Colin Sexton was pretty much a 25-point-per-game scorer last season. And that's one thing Colin Sexton can do is put the ball in the basket. We all know that. And he really showed that he is a – I don't want to say elite, but he is a very, very good bucket getter in the NBA. Um, I like things that I've seen from young guys like Isaac Okoro. I love acquiring Jared Allen um, in the James Harden trade. I think the Cavs did some nice things, and going into this offseason, I think it's more just about figuring out the, the true direction of this team. Um, there was a lot of speculation of if Colin Sexton was going to get traded this offseason. As of right now, he was he is still in the Cleveland Cavalier uniform. Um, I love the drafting of Evan Mobley. I think he has the potential to be the best player in this draft, um, and I think him and Jared Allen can play side by side. I really do. They're both athletic. Mobley can stretch the floor a little bit, and I'm sure he's going to develop his outside shooting a lot more. He'll, he should, you know, that would be more common for this Cavs team to have a lot more success having Mobley with the ability to stretch the floor. But even if they decide to build with Mobley, I think he can play the five in the future, you know, once he, you know, grows more into his body and stuff. I think the Cavs really did a great job drafting. Um, they also traded for Ricky Rubio in the offseason, which – not like a big time move, so to say, but I think it's nice just to have some, you know, a vet in the locker room that's, you know, been around a little bit, played in the in the postseason. It's you can never have too many vets, especially when they lost some guys in the offseason. You know, some veteran players that have been in that locker room a lot. Um, but let's talk about the Lori Marketing trade. Let's talk about the Lori Marketing trade because at first, when I first seen a notification hit my phone, I'm like, that's cool. That's okay, you're getting some young talent. I think it was a four-year, $67 million deal off the top of my head. And I'm thinking, like, okay, that's that's not a bad move. That's not a bad move. And then I remembered um, they just re-signed Jerry Allen for five years, $100 million. They just drafted Evan Mobley. And now it's starting not to make a lot of sense. They still have Kevin Love on the roster. Now it's starting to not make a whole bunch of sense. Um, four years, 67 is not a, a ton of money, but... It's just, it's interesting to see, you know, what the thought process is behind this. This is my initial reaction, so maybe I'm not thinking about all the ins and outs of this. Um, they also gave up Larry Nance, who I think is a very good glue guy to have, man. I really love Larry Nance. He's a very good defender, versatile defender. Um, and he was, you know, making some cases for an all-defensive team early on in the season. He was playing exceptionally well on the defensive side of the ball. Um, but I just... Now I'm just I'm kind of torn on it. I don't know how good of a move this is. I think it's good to stockpile young talent, no matter what you have. But will this hurt the development of Evan Mobley? That's to be seen. Um, will this help Garland? Will this help Colin Sexton? We don't know. Will this help Isaac Okoro? Like, how does this? How does adding Lori Marketing really help this team? I don't know. But it, we'll see how the direction of the Cavs is. We know they're not trying to rent win right now. So I think on the surface level. It's a little confusing because you already you just drafted a player pretty much at that position. Now you have kind of a stockpile front court. Um, we'll see if they buy out Kevin Love. If they're able to find a trade partner for Kevin Love. We, it's hard to gauge what you can do with Kevin Love. He has a huge contract. Do you just let him, you know, walk eventually, or do you buy him out? Do you see if somebody will, you know, take a fire on him? 
That's to be seen. They've been trying to trade Kevin Love for like three years, and it hasn't worked. Uh, but other than that, I I think this can be a good move because you're get, you're getting another young talent. Lori Markkinen has only been in the league what four four or five years. It's, he has not been in the league a long time. He can't be older than 20, 23, 24. Like he's not uh, he's not an old player. He's not an old player. Just didn't really work out in Chicago as well. Um, it started out really good for him. He looked very promising as a rookie. Jim Boylan comes in and basically misses his game up, I guess. I mean, he, he along with most of the people in Chicago, just did not like playing for Jim Boylan because uh, he just wasn't a good coach. But that really stunted his development. And then last season, they tried, they tried so much to play him with Vucevic. He ended up getting replaced. I think Daniel Tice was in the starting lineup for the majority of the second half of the season. So, you know, it's been a long process, which is why he was in restricted free agency for so long. Um, it is the end of August. It's almost September, and he was still sending res- restricted free agency. So, I guess it's good to see that the Bulls were able to get rid of him, get something back. This was a three-team deal. The Bulls get back Derrick Jones Jr. from the Trailblazers. Larry Nance goes from Cleveland to Portland, and then we see the Cavs acquire Lauren Markkinen. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the other guys involved because I want to keep this video mainly focused on the Cleveland Cavaliers. I've talked a lot about the Trailblazers and the Bulls this offseason. I still do have to do videos on them just to focus directly on those teams. But from the Cavs standpoint, it's good to, you know, stop passing on talent. It's just would this affect the development of a Mobley, a Jerry Allen? You know, how would this affect those guys in the front court? Um, what does it mean for Kevin Love? And what other moves are, you know, in the future for this team? Is Colin Sexton gonna be on the move sometime this season? Because the writing's on the wall that they don't want to pay Colin Sexton. And with two small guards, we know it's it's very tough to win meaningful basketball games with two small guards. It's very tough to be a contending team with two small guards. The Portland Trailblazers made it to the conference finals a few years ago, and everybody saw that as a W. They did that with two small guards. But you got to put a lot around two small guards defensively to make it work. Um, There's a rare case of the Toronto Raptors, but they had two super defensive-minded guards that even though they're small in stature, they were, you know, tough defenders. I don't know if Colin Sexton and Darius Garland are like that. I, In fact, I know they're not like that on the defensive side. Um, Sexton took a few strides defensively. He's a competitor, so he's definitely going to compete on that side of the ball. But sometimes you just can't make up for being a small guy. So you just can't make up for it. Like, like when I, whenever I hoop, if somebody just is just surely stronger than me, it doesn't matter how much I battle. They're going to put me in a bucket. They're going to get a bucket, like, for sure. Like, in the post, they're going to get a bucket. If they use their size to their advantage, they're more than likely than not going to get a bucket. It's just, it's tough. And these guys are playing NBA basketball at the highest level of the world. Highest level in the world, I'm sorry. But it's just, like, it's tough for two small guards to really contribute to winning basketball games. And they might eventually have to make a decision on Garland or Sexton. And I feel like most people say Garland. Um, let's talk about Darius Garland real quick. Because his rookie year, he was god-awful. He was terrible. He was one of the worst players in the league statistically. Um, I think as far as advanced numbers go, he was really ranked near the bottom. Um, and I think that kind of contributed to he barely played in college. He played like five games in college. And then he got hurt. And it's tough to jump from barely playing D1 basketball to you're starting on the NBA team. It's tough to do that. Um, we've seen some guys struggle. I think James Wiseman. Struggled to adjust to the flow of the NBA. He only played a few games in college, too. Um, we'll see if he maybe, you know, catches his footing this year like Darius Garland did. But I think I love what I'm loving the trajectory of Darius Garland. I think he can be an all-star caliber guard. He has game, and he's he's got a nice floater, can shoot the ball, good in the pick and roll, becoming a better playmaker. I like the upside of Darius Garland, and if you having to pick between the two, you might want to go with Garland if you are the Cleveland Cavaliers. We'll see how that goes. But for as far as this season goes, what's next for the Cavs? I think it's just all about developing your talent um, and trying to get another high draft pick if you can. Just develop that, that young talent, man. Um, see if Jerry Allen is worth the 100 M's that you guys gave him. See if, you know, Evan Mobley is the next Anthony Davis, which is what they were comparing him to. Don't shoot the messenger. That's just what everybody was saying. Um, see what you got in Isaac Okor. I think he had a very solid rookie year. See if maybe you can find a little bit of success with a small backcourt. You know, let Garland continue to grow. Let Sexton continue to do his thing. Um, maybe adding Laurie Markin in. Maybe he can rebound from finishing in Chicago very poorly. There's a lot of upside for this Cavs team. I think in the young talent department. 
And the good thing for them, they're not expected to win games, so they can find themselves right back in the lottery next year, getting another high pick. Um, not familiar with any prospects really coming in, but you know, there's gonna be some young talent to choose from, and we'll see how that falls, unfolds for the Cavs. But this is the latest installment of the What's Next series featuring Ohio's Cleveland Cavaliers. <laughs> Appreciate y'all for tuning in for my Cavs fans. This one was for y'all. And I'll be back next time with another video. Might be talking about your favorite team, so be sure to tune in. But I'm out.